So let's move on to another patron called Ancient Being. So now some ancient creature, whatever it may be, with huge amounts of power, somehow want to employ you. Or maybe they actually coerce you in some way to get you to work for them. And look what they've got right here in the first picture, a lich. So you can kind of see where this is headed right here. So up here at the top under Ancient Being. Your group is bound to the designs of an ancient being of tremendous power and influence. You might serve as the creature's eyes and ears in this world, carrying information back to it. Or perhaps you work as its direct agent, enacting its will. Whether you chose this arrangement or were tricked into it, you can count on the strange resources of your benefactor as long as you serve its purpose. I'm kind of saying whether you do this voluntarily or not, it's going to sort of uh, keep its end of the bargain. Types of ancient beings. From brooding dra dragons to unfathomable voices whispering from the dark, ancient beings guide and empower mortals for inscrutable reasons. The relationship your group has to its patron might be a clearly defined exchange, or it could be uncertain or forceful. Whatever the nature of the being, as long as your group fulfills its role, the being offers rewards. Maybe the group gets captured by a lich or a dragon and then they have to do what it wants them to. Roller pick from the ancient being table. So here they got some great options. So you could roll a d6 or number one right here. You could just pick as an elder dragon. An ancient dragon seeks knowledge or power. It wishes to gather greater wealth for its hoard. Its ambitions expanding in its advancing years. Second, a lich, an undead spellcaster of immense power, employs your group. Its interests are strangely diverse and seemingly benign. Perhaps it's not as evil as conventional adventuring wisdom suggests. It's like a good opportunity for a backstab there. Third, a bound fiend. This fiend is bound to a location, either in its true form or as a possessing spirit. Whether trapped in an unbreakable circle of binding sigils or sealed as a spirit within a gigantic statue, the fiend's influence drives your group. Fourth here, guardian celestial. An angel or another powerful celestial takes an interest in a specific region of the material plane. It cultivates a network of mortal informants and agents to serve its agenda. So there's just a few of the possibilities. And then continuing on up here, number five, the endless. This person has lived many lifetimes because they can't die, at least not permanently. No matter the cause of their demise, they just keep on returning. To all appearances, they're alive and mortal, but they control the amassed resources of an immortal. And then lastly, a primal manifestation. Its existence defies mortal understanding. The being simply is. It could be a primordial force of nature, awakened to self-awareness that now inhabits the landscape, or an alien intellect that whispers through proxies, omens, and idols. So what are the ancient being perks? The first one here, equipment. Your patron's network has access to certain magic items. You can purchase common magic items from your patron contact. The DM determines the available stock or can call for a group intelligence investigation check to ascertain if the ancient being's network can successfully locate a desired item. The DC for this check is 10 in a city, 15 in a town, and 20 in a village. If the check fails, 1d8 days must pass before the same item can be searched for again in that community. So how great is this? You're looking for a particular magic item, something to really top off whatever your character is? Roll the check right there. The DM sets the price of a common magic item or determines, it's randomly, determines it randomly with 2d4 times 10 gold. That's pretty cheap for a common item or half that for a consumable like a potion or a scroll. So after equipment, that one's going to be hard to beat. Research. Relying on an ancient being's network of contacts, the being's vast collection of lore, or perhaps the being's direct teachings help you unearth hidden secrets. If you can contact your patron or their agent, your group makes ability checks made to research lore related to your patron's interest and influence with advantage. Next year we have Sanctuary. Your patron's agents have safe houses or other secure gatherings spread across a wide region. Your group knows how to locate these friendly enclaves and can maintain a modest lifestyle in one for no cost. In return, you must defend the sanctuary or protect the secret of its existence. In the next year, strange gifts. 
your patron grants your group a small measure of esoteric power. At fifth level and again at 13, you gain one supernatural gift as described in the treasure chapter of the Dungeon Master's Guide. The DM determines which gifts are available. This is going to be hard to beat right here. The perks for this one just look like they're almost too good to be true. So that's a great one there. Ancient being contacts. Looking at your different contacts down here. Could be an employer. An established member of local society acts as the interface between you and the patron and provides the cover of legitimate employment. They could be a bartender, shopkeeper, just any local person you might never expect. Noble, local official, whatever. Could be a backroom dealer. An exclusive area in an otherwise ordinary establishment requires a password or token to gain entry. There you meet and communicate with shadowy agents of your patrons. That's a nice little extra one to throw in there. And then looking next up here, magical message drop. Magically recorded messages from your contact or your patron appear in odd places. So they just sort of appear here and there when you least expect it. You know to check a predetermined location such as a crack in an ancient monolith or a specific grave for instructions. That's a good one. Number four, visions. Your patron doesn't use intermediates, instead speaking to you in dreams, omens, or visions. The being appears in your mind as you sleep, taking control of your dreams to deliver instructions that become difficult to ignore. If ephemeral echo, you contact, your contact never physically reveals itself to you. Perhaps it's the ghost of a dead person, an entity that appears outside the flow of time, or a projected illusion of a being that never leaves the patron's hidden sanctum. Interesting. The mouthpiece, the ancient being's voice whispers through the lips of an ordinary person. So they sort of take over somebody just uh, maybe on the street. Your patron might possess the body of a stranger or a party member to converse with you. You can have some fun with that one. So looking at ancient being operatives here, considering the overarching goals of your group's ancient being patron when determining who the recruit as agents are, in what arenas does that being likely hold sway? A powerful lich recruits other ambitious spellcasters, as well as skilled warriors to serve as bodyguards. A dragon values socially adept agents and those who influence society's decision makers. Consider how your capabilities and interests align directly with those of the ancient being or how you unwittingly fell into the patron's service. So here we've got a being operative roles table. So first could be a devotee, could be an infiltrator, a mouthpiece, a pupil, a guardian, or even offspring. That's a good interest right there. So down here they have ancient being quest. This is always the interesting part here. How is this going to tie into what you're doing in the game? Though their work remains mysterious, ancient beings send their agents to exact their will in a myriad of ways. Servants of other powerful beings try to stymie your patron's plans. While misguided or entirely justified, monster hunters seek to rid the world of their ancient foes. An ancient being's lengthy history inspires unusual and potent enemies. The ancient being quest table is below. So number one, a rescue. A wayward agent went missing while gathering information or materials. You must discover their fate and recover them and their findings. That's a great quest right there. Sabotage. You must destroy an aspect of a rival's organization, either assassinating a key minion or destroying a critical object. It's not a good one for rogues and assassins. Number three, artifice. Your specialized skills are instrumental to establishing components for a powerful magic ritual or object. you got to gather some things here. Next one, treachery. A high-profile minion of another powerful figure is in a position to betray their master to benefit the patron. You must convince them to defect to your organization or extract them from non-hostile territory. Next, culling. A respected agent of your patron, possibly an ally or a mentor, mentor for your group, has been compromised. Perhaps they are defecting to a rival, attempting to seize the ancient being's power. Whatever the case, you must catch them and end the threat. And next here, Astral Heist. A powerful rival of your patron stores their secrets in a mind vault on the astral plane. Boy, you're really getting out there now. That means they, they can't be tricked or coerced into revealing anything. 
nor can their thoughts be read. You must find the vault and travel through the rival's deadly memories uh, to find the knowledge of, of your patron's desire. So that's a wild one there. The rescue, the sabotage, the treachery, things like that. Sound like some better ones. So there's the ancient being quest. Some good additions to it are added there. So until next time, good luck and good gaming.